The Geostone keyboard from High Ground and 100 Thieves looks pretty interesting on paper. It has 5 pin hot swap, silicone dampening in between the plate and PCB, and an interesting keycap design all in a 65% layout. But the only question I have after using this keyboard is why does this exist? Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we'll be looking at the Geostone keyboard from 100 Thieves and High Ground. For transparency, I bought this keyboard myself and I was pretty lucky to get this for retail because I definitely wouldn't have paid aftermarket for this keyboard and I'm going to talk about why. The keyboard was sold at a price of $135 and good luck trying to buy the keyboard on the aftermarket. Inside the box we have the keyboard wrapped in tissue paper and also included is some high ground stickers, a manual, a USB-C cable, a switch puller and a high ground branded keycap puller. I wish the high ground gave us a 2-in-1 puller with 100 Thieves branding on one side and high ground on the other. These types of switch pullers are really uncomfortable to use and I much prefer the 2-in-1. The Geostone comes in a plastic case with a grey aluminum mounting plate. There aren't any flip down feet, but there are 4 large rubber feet in each corner of the keyboard. You only get one option in terms of switch selection, and that's a gator on reds. They are unlubed and 3 pinned, I would have liked to see at least a tactile and a clicky option available, but there isn't an issue here, as the keyboard is hot swappable with support for 5 pinned switches, which I think is a great feature. It also means that the stabilizers can be modded, these are plate mount and factory lubed pretty heavily, but there is still some rattle present. PCB does have north facing sockets, so there will be interference with cherry profile keycaps unless you use a long pole switch like the U4Ts. High ground has also added a silicone dampener in between the plate and PCB in what they call high ground orange to match the color of the PCB, which I think is a nice touch. It has a recessed center mounted USB-C connection which is nice to see, and there is some software available for the GS tone if you want to customize the RGB or change the key layout. There's per key RGB and it's pretty bright with no light bleed from the keycaps. I always prefer to have the RGB off, especially without backlit keycaps. Speaking of the keycaps, I think this is the main selling point of the keyboard. It has a topographic design in black and red, and the lines between the keycaps are actually connected, which looks super nice. They have a smooth but grippy texture, which I like. The right side of the keycaps has a mountainous design with high ground text on the enter key, I really like the design on these keycaps, and I think they just really sold the board to me. These are PBT die sub keycaps in the OEM profile, so that there isn't going to be any interference. The legending is on the side of the keycaps in what they call ninja print. I think that the keycaps on the right side of the keycaps are very hard to see against the mountain design, so that's something to keep in mind. I wish that high ground made this red topographic design carry into the case, it would look really nice and would have made the keyboard feel less generic. The keycaps were sold separately for $50, which I think is fair given the design and name recognition, but they were only sold in a 68 key set, so you needed this exact 65% layout in order to get full compatibility with 3 1U keys on the right hand side and a 1.75U right shift. The keycaps are 1.4mm thick, and I think that it gives the keyboard a fairly deep sound profile, even with the stock gator on reds. Here's how the Geostone sounds, and there will be a full sound test at the end of the video if you're interested. For $135, this keyboard sounds pretty average. The Gator on Reds could definitely use some lube and the stabs need some tuning. I'm gonna call the price of the keyboard itself at $85 without the keycaps, which I thought was fair given the hot swap PCB and the silicone dampener, until I saw you can buy an RK68 for just over 50 bucks. It has hot swap, same 65% layout, double shot ABS keycaps and no silicone dampener, but it's $50 versus $135. So is the Geostone overpriced? I would say yes, but what I think you're mainly paying for is the keycap design and the tie-in to 100 Thieves, and whether or not the upcharge is worth it is up to you. As a keyboard enthusiast, this keyboard really is nothing special. It doesn't have any particular standout features, the stabs are so-so, and it doesn't feel like I got $135 worth of keyboard here. If I'm completely missing the point of this keyboard, please let me know in the comments. One of the co-founders of High Ground, Rustin Sotade, has also stated on Twitter that they are looking into releasing full keycap sets and south facing switches into the future and I'll definitely be keeping my eye on that. Overall, I have pretty mixed feelings about this keyboard. I'm definitely happy to see that they didn't over market the Geostone like a certain ultra premium keyboard without the ultra premium price tag, but I would like to see more innovation in future releases as I feel like the Geostone is just an RK68 with a silicone dampener 
and an $85 upcharge. So hopefully with the support of 100 Thieves, we should see some more interesting stuff from High Ground in the future, and I hope that their statement on the Geostone being just the beginning for High Ground isn't empty. I'll be keeping my Geostone around as a collector's piece, I won't be retuning the stabs or looping the switches, I'll be keeping it stuck and probably putting it back in the box until I get a shelf to display it on. No link to the keyboard as it's obviously sold out. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It supports me and helps me sleep at night with my recent keyboard purchases. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.